Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and I'm a Hatch educator and today is the class that everyone's been waiting for. We are going to talk all about shading and all about kicking up your embroidery skills, kicking it up a notch and making it spectacular. So let's start off by bringing in our file, our artwork, and I have mine on my desktop nice and handy right there. Oh, I was already on it. There we go. There's our leaf. Now this is simply a picture of a leaf that I found on when I was walking my wiener dogs. And I thought that is a beautiful example of shading. Now it comes in crooked. So we're going to turn it around and make sure it's straight. Doesn't have to be perfect though, because the leaf isn't perfect and we are talking about nature. The second thing we need to do is check our size because wow, it's huge. We don't want to digitize it at that size. I think we want to do it at about eight by eight, eight by 10. Let's make this a six maybe, six, six by eight. Now that looks terrible, but uh, let's put our rulers on so we can see where we are. Let's go back. We, I like to zero out everything. We have to go a little bit right here. And then we're going to press zero to get it back. Now, does not look fantastic. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want to set it up because we're going to be zooming right into 600% so we can do a few things. Um, so I want to, I want you guys to set it up and this is John Deere does an excellent explanation of how and why we're doing this. And I'll go through it a little bit, but you need to watch his videos to know exactly why. So I switched over to metric um, because it's easier for the stitches. I find for the pictures and different things like that, it's easier in inches. And you know, you can switch back. If it doesn't show up, make sure nothing is selected. Let's right click on our grid and we're gonna change it to one millimeter, both both to one, so 1.1 square. There we go, and that looks kind of, you know, a lot of lines, but that's okay when we zoom in, look how nice that is. And that's gonna really help us to figure out this shading. And we're gonna do, we've got three or four different areas to shade and we're gonna try three or four different ways and you can decide which way you like the best. So we've sized our picture, we've sized our grid, and now we're gonna sit and look at the different ways that we can do this leaf. There's many ways. So most people will look at this and they'll decide, okay, so all I have to do is do a stitch around, fill it, and then take a black line and you know outline everything and do the detail work. You can do that. You can absolutely do that, except that's a bit simple, I guess. And this is an advanced class, so we, we want to do it a little differently. But if that's the way you want to do it, you go right ahead. That's a good start. The way I want to do it, now I stitched out my leaf and I was absolutely amazed at how it looked. The picture that I put up didn't do it justice. So when you guys are done this, stitch it out and have a look and the light catches the thread and it shimmers in different ways and it looks 3D and it has detail work on it and it's absolutely fantastic. So get through this and stitch it out and you'll see what I mean on that. It's really neat. So let's bring up our re resequence because I like it. And the way I see this leaf, it is, you know, one piece, but I see different sections in it. And I also see if you zoom in here, you can see this goes to an angle that way and this goes to an angle that way. And that is what we're gonna play up on. So there's a couple ways you can do this to start off. You can, uh, we wanna digitize, so let's go to digitize. Now you could use digitize blocks to do these. That's easy enough. I'll do one or two of them this way. But let's make it easy because we are talking about doing the um, you know, fancy shading work on it. So let's make everything as easy as possible, but do feel free to use the blocks. Now I'm zoomed in. I'm not quite zoomed in enough, but I just want you guys to see what I'm doing. Left clicking and right clicking. Now for this top part, remember not to click too closely for this top part, 
I want to cut it halfway. Now I have my auto scroll on, I'm trying to get used to it. So halfway in between, do you see what I'm doing here? And you can make it about here. You don't have to be all that precise. And we wanna go up the vein here, up here. And that is our first piece, hit enter, and there it is. Now that's fine like that. We want to go back to our select key. Now you can do it in pieces like that and that would still be pretty good. We're gonna kick it up a notch, so let's kick it up. Let's go to our uh, reshape. And what we wanna do, we have, where's our angle line, it's down here. We wanna match the angle to the veins that were going on and they were about at like this. I don't really know the numbers, I just know that. So that's the angle that we want for that. Um, you can move this if you wanna see the angle and copy it, you don't have to be that precise, but you know what, the more work you put into it, the better it's gonna be. So the other thing I wanna do, double click on it, and it's gonna bring up this. To Tommy, yeah, great. Let's make it a little bit better. Let's do more of a random look. So any one of these have a random look and I love it, I love it. I picked number 44 and see how the stitches change and you can see the angle a little bit more. So those are the three steps that we're gonna make on our leaf and you see how different that looks? And that's amazing. So let's do the second part. Let's go to digitize and we're digitizing a closed shape. And we're just gonna go around here and you guys can be more precise. Remember I said that. I just gonna rush through this and I'm doing right clicks in the corner. And if you can catch all these, if you look here, if you zoom into where you should be, which is about 600, if you catch all these little divots and you know, little bumps and everything, if you catch all those ones, it's gonna look even better when you're done even better absolutely so you guys take your time and do it i'm gonna zoom out to not quite the proper size and if you look here where i'm bringing my let's do another one other point bringing it here down and we want to overlap a little bit now zoom right into where you're supposed to be which is 600 or close by and you want this is when you can use the squares you want it to be a millimeter zoomed in and that is your overlap. And that is why one of the reasons why we changed our grid, because we can use the grid for everything that we need. So one millimeter, let's go up here. Again, you guys can be way more careful. And we're done, hit enter. And you can see the difference in the two. You can see the difference, how it looks. So let's go back and do the same things that we did before. Let's go into our um, well, we don't have to do that first. We can pick our number. We had number 44. And if you need to write the numbers down, um, that'll make it easier. Okay. And what's the last thing we need to do? We need to change our angle because this is all about angles today. All about it. Let's see where it is. We want it to go up about like that. And see how that changes. Now, if you look back in the stitches, hey, that looks okay. But look again at my stitch out because I absolutely loved it. So one of my other favorite sayings, let's do that again. So start in a little bit. And again, I'm just going to do this super quickly because we have a lot of things to cover. Oh, that auto scroll drives me nuts, eh, but I'm getting used to it. Straight down the middle and then zoom right in if you need to and go in one millimeter overlap. As long as everything overlaps, we're gonna be okay with this. There we go, and hit enter. And back again, a lot of repetitive stuff, but don't worry, this is gonna go quickly. And whoops, I'm just haphazardly clicking everywhere. Um, it's gonna go quickly, and it's absolutely awesome when you're done. There we go. And then we wanna go in and change the angle, because it's all about angles today, and we're trying to take this simple leaf and make it look absolutely awesome. So grab your angle tool, grab it, grab it, and we want it to go up, but even more than that. I didn't grab it properly. Where's the end? There it is. Where is it? Way down for some reason. So let's fix this. Sometimes you have to do a little searching for it. 
There we go. So I want it to be kind of picture the veins much better, much better. There we go. Now let's step back and look. See how awesome that is? And it didn't take much. And these lines in here are going to give, uh, even, even though they're overlapped, they're going to give the leaf more definition. And I love it. So you can start here. Let's do the next part. Let's do the next part. Part. And this is how I see the leaf. If you are doing something and you see it a little bit differently, that's fine too. There we go. And we'll put it right here. And we don't want too many stitches. You need to, um, I'm going to zoom in and show you. You need to stagger it a little bit so we don't have a big clump because we're going to do some running stitches over it. So it is fine even if you pull it to here or up a little bit. We don't want all like these overlapping. It's already starting to be and we've only done a couple. So let's move that one up and then we want it in a little bit. So there we go. There we go. And we started right here and enter and then let's change it. And we will fix all of our start and end points too because that's going to be part of it. So we've changed it to our number 44. We go to reshape. I'm going to zoom out a smidge. And we want the angle line to be the same as what we did. And that didn't change the stitches, I can see. So it was about like that. Let's go back. I must have haphazardly clicked. Do it again. Let's do that again. That's better. Thank you. That's better. And see how that's coming together? The stitches are in that angle. These are in that angle. And it kind of makes the leaf. I kind of pick a picked a complicated leaf, but that's okay too. So let's do that again. I know you're tempted to do the whole portion right here, but we're just going to take it halfway and we're going to stagger that up a little bit so we don't have hockey puck embroidery. See that one went really fast. A little bit of overlap. Remember one millimeter overlap. There we go. And we're going to change the angle and the angle goes and you can move them around to you like it. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to move the angles to how I, I think it should look. I kind of like that. That works for me. There we go. And check again. Yep. Number 44. Okay. So now for our last piece on this side, on this side, Let's go and again, zoom right in there and get all these little bumps. You see where the leaf is folded underneath. If you can get those, that would be great. Again, I'm just doing it super quickly with my mouse. This would be great with a pen, pen and touch. It would be absolutely fantastic. I don't have that on my studio computer. And we're going to bring this here. And we're going to overlap. We're going to have to go in a little bit. Try not to do too many. If you if your machine's making noises when you're stitching out, you got to be careful of that. There we go. And you know what? I think that angle is almost correct. Thank you. Yep, I, I'm fine with that. If you need to put it, you know, where the veins would be to make sure you have the right angle, that's fine too. If it helps you visualize it, I kind of like it. And it's pattern 44. Awesome. See how that's looking. I guess we could change the color too, but let's keep going because this is cool. The more work you put into this, the better it's going to be. So we're just going to keep working away. And this is going to change your embroidery quite a bit. Again, it's uh, hard to see it on the screen and it's going to, don't forget about your overlap. It's, it looks way better when you stitch it out like a hundred million gazillion times better. I was so pleased with it. Um, I thought it was fantastic and it shimmers in the light and I loved it. Okay. So whoops, me being me, not zooming in enough. Let's go edit, undo reshape. Let's zoom in enough. So I grab the right thing. And if you need, again, if you need to put them where, did I do it again? Ah, uh, do I do that all the time? Yes, I do. If you need to put the angle where the veins would be to make sure you get the right angle, that's fine. How about we put that back? Thank you. Don't be going over. There we go. Looking good. Next one. We're almost done. This went pretty quickly to create a whole bunch of, 
you know, fancy looking. People wonder how you did it. And also another thing that's really cool is the embroidery thread. We used, um, I think we used Madeira on this one. Madeira thread and other embroidery thread, it's shiny. So on these different angles, it catches the light differently. So some parts are shimmery and some parts aren't. And it's really cool for that. Look at almost perfect. Let's go in and check anyways. Back to select, whoops, select, no, select. And back to our reshape, because we love you reshape. And that is probably pretty good, isn't it? Awesome, thank you. That makes it easier as we go along. Now we only have two parts left, so oh my goodness, that went pretty darn quickly. Remember to start in a little bit. And remember when you guys are doing it, get in all those details. Don't overlap too much here. We can bring it in. We don't want to hockey puck this area. We don't want to do that. And straight up with our overlap, hit enter. We're going to have to change the angle on that one. I can see that. And we'll change it right around. And again, move them to where you can see because that's kind of a sharp angle. Fixed, looking good, maybe a little bit more up. I don't know. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted. Now we're on our last piece. Wow, fast. And already we're going to change the color and we're going to step back and look at this. And you will see, even just on the computer, how great this looks. So this is part of the shading. Shading is all about angles and believe it or not, running stitches believe it or not, running stitches. So having the angles makes all the difference. And that is why I'm doing it this way. So you guys can see that, that having the angles makes all the difference. So let's do this. And I don't know why I moved that one down. So let's move it back up again. And there we go. And it's all on number 44, which is a nice randomy kind of stitch. Now already, let's look at that. How about we uh, go to colors and how about we change that? What did I have it? We could do light brown. Yeah, good enough. And look already, you can see the dimension in it. These stitches going this way look different than these stitches going that way. And already your plain maple leaf that was taken from a picture looks fantastic. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Absolutely. And it looks different and it looks like you know, dimensional. It looks almost like this part is kind of bent up a little bit. And again, you could see where it looks better, where I grabbed all the little details. Nature isn't perfect, so feel free. Okay, so we have that. Um, let's select this and let's, I think we're good on it. Let's go to edit. I don't think I want to do any more on this one. Uh, apply closest join. That'll just make it so it stitches out nicely. Um, make your connections. This isn't a connections class, so I'm not going to take super amount of time to do that. Um, they should be overlapping. So you start one where you end one. That's basically how I did it. And there we go. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do now, this is hard, a little bit hard to explain and you'll get better at it as you go along, but this is the best way and we don't often work like this, and I don't often work like this, but this to me was the easiest way to show it. Um, you can turn off TrueView. I do have TrueView on for this, and I do have it on for a reason, and I'm gonna show you why. So let's start off, let's start off, I guess, in the middle piece. Um, that might need a little adjustment on mine, but that's okay. And let's look at what we see. Let's focus on this guy. We see yellow all the way down and we see kind of veiny parts going up and it's kind of a, a yellow glow and some, some veins going off. So the way I did this and or the way I found that it's easier to show you this because when you're doing shading, it's all manual work and it's all done with the running stitch. And the key to it is matching your angles. So I found it a lot easier to have the stitches in TrueView because you can see the angles of the stitches. Now we're trying to shade and we're trying to blend. So we want our blending stitches to go the same 
direction. If you, you can do blending or you can do shading rather and do it in opposite direction, but they'll stand out more. We want them to blend right in. And when you're looking close like this, you can see these awesome angles and how great it looks. Yours will probably turn out differently. And uh, this one has already turned out differently than the one I did yesterday. So looking back at our picture kind of for reference, maybe move it over here so we can kind of see what we're doing. Um, this is again just for beginning and just for learning it how we want to do it now we do need to zoom in to our 600% so we can see what we're doing enter there now you can see the stitches nicely and we're gonna uh, start at the bottom but we got to be careful of this area so let's go to our digitize because that's what we're doing after all and this is where the magic starts you can do freehand open shape i don't have a pen i have a crappy mouse and it's really hard to do yes i still have a crappy mouse we're working on it um digitize open shape and we are just going to simply do a running stitch and we're going to start here and we're going to go down the middle now i guess you guys work at 600%. I am going to do it a little bit bigger just so you can see. And we're going to work on this side first. But we're going to go up to the top. And now we're kind of looking here. And we're also looking at our um, veins as well. Actually, I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And it's hard to see, but you guys will see it in a minute. Now, all you're doing is out and back and here and out and back. This is just for the first wave of it. So we're just kind of doing the veins. Now you don't have to stick exactly to the picture that you see. I can't work out that far. You don't have to stick exactly to it. Nature is nature and uh, you know, as long as you stick to your angles, which right here, so you just kind of want to follow here, that's fine. And we're going to do this a couple different ways so you can see the effect on the picture of the stitch out that I did. I had it done a couple of different ways. So this one is just kind of making the veins go. And where we started is where we want to end and we're going to hit enter. Now that looks shocking, but yet cool. That'll blend in quite a bit. Now that doesn't give us the glow that we want, but we're gonna do the glow on this side. So we're gonna try different ways on each side. And when you stitch it out, you will have a wonderful variety of ways of doing stuff. And I would, uh, you know, put it in a little book and write down, you know, number them one, one, two, three, four, five, six, that sort of thing, and different ways. So you can use the effect on different designs. Um, and I think it'll work out nicely. Now, if you want to try it with a true view off, it's a little more difficult to see. And I didn't think we could see the angles properly doing it um, for the video. Let me move my picture out a little bit. See, to me, it was kind of hard to see them. I, I don't know. So, well, this is what I came up with for the video. You don't necessarily have to do this regularly, but just to get started, let's do it. So let's take a quick peek over here and we're doing this side. Now it has lots of veins and it has actually quite a bit of glowy. So we're going to do that this time, D you know, replicate it and the veins going up. So let's try that again. Actually, the next thing we should do is we need to make this blue and we need to make it ah, gold that does look a lot better but see how I kept the angles okay so let's try this again and if you're working on it and you're practicing I would do one side and other side in one piece I'm not doing it this way because I'm trying to show you different things um, I'm also not digitizing zoomed in enough because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing but do up one, go this side, go that side, go this side, go that side. It'll make it easier. But for now, for what we're doing, um, we don't want a big, huge jump stitch. So we're gonna, we end it here. So we're gonna start here. Now, this is when our uh, grid comes in. You can't see it because I have true view because we wanna see them, but that is one millimeter. That is one millimeter. So if you're doing you know something let me show you if you're doing something that's here to here 
and you're trying to shade, that's one millimeter. That's one millimeter. And this is probably, you know, a lot more than one. So this little bump here is basically one. So if you want something to show up, you have to make it bigger than one millimeter. So let's start here because we're doing this just a little bit differently. And let's zoom in a little bit more. Try not to get confused here. Let's go back. We're at too much. Whoops. We're at too much. So let's zoom out a little bit. 750, 600. Thank you very much. And we're going to go up here. Now, when you go over things, you don't have to worry about it too much because it's only a running stitch. So you're not going to have any hockey puck embroidery here. So let's go up a little bit and let's do a variety of shorter stitches, longer, longer for the veins back on its own, or you don't have to, but I think it looked better and make sure you keep to the angle that we're doing. Now, I would skip a few, go up and skip a few, and I'm going to show you why. Um, let's continue to do this one closely. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. So up, down, up, short, up, back, up, and we're going to show you how different it looks. Now I'm basically doing, you know, every other stitch. You can kind of see the stitches here and up one you can kind of see them and just do it randomly and you know quickly I guess is how to make it random if you're doing a long one then do another long one and then do a short one and come back oops now see that angle was a bit off you don't have to be that particular about it but for this we want to see the angle that's the angle that we want and back to where we were up and I have auto scroll on and that was actually really convenient. Thank you, auto scroll. Up and see how I'm trying to place it. If I place it here, it's going across. I want it to be here and back. And that's how you get the same angles. And you will get good at it that you don't need to, you know, put the true view on to do it. And you can see your squares and you can figure out how long you're doing things. We'll make this one out a bit more. Stick to the same. See how I'm kind of going around here? Stick to the same angle and the threads will blend in beautifully. I will uh, zoom in, edit in, I guess, a picture of the final one for inspiration. So now I'm spreading it out a little bit more. We're almost getting to the top. Let's do more and then let's do more. And let's do more back on itself, a little bit more. Now I've lost my angle, so I'm going to undo that. And I missed that one, so put it back. Let's go up to about here. And I'm skipping more, so it's kind of spread out a little bit. And you'll get faster at this and you'll get better. And this is where you know, thinking outside the box. You can shade anything. It's really fast to do. Um, I'm not being too fast right now. And for now, this isn't quite correct, but for now, let's just leave it like this. Now, that looks like a lot, but let's step back and you can see if we're looking at it, pretty cool. And that, again, will blend in even more. Pretty cool. Now do that all in one and try to keep it even or not, but see how that's going to look like a little glow a little bit and blend in. Okay, let's try it again on another one and let's see. Let's see if we can do it in one shot without too much issue. Now the vein, if we look in here, the veins are kind of thicker and kind of more yellow more you know a stronger color so we can go up and we can go down again and let's do let's get zoomed into where we are supposed to be so i went up and i went down and let's do now for this one i, I want to show you different effects so let's zoom right into an insane amount so you can see what i'm doing go back on itself and if you're zoomed in too much you're going to get a different effect. See how I'm doing this though? And I'm going to skip one stitch and do it. And we're going to make it kind of tighter than the other one. Still keep the same angle. Come back to your own line. Still keep the same angle. 
and see that regular spacing that I'm putting through there. I'm trying really hard to keep it regular just so I can show you. This isn't what I recommend that you do. It has, you know, a pretty cool effect and I'm making my stitches kind of short, kind of short, and they're basically all one length. So there's no variable that I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing it. And I'm skipping one stitch and I'm doing it the same, same angle. And you're going to see what effect that has. And again, normally go up one side and go up the other and make sure you make all your connections. But for this one, I just want to show you each one and each way that looks a little differently. So I've got it thicker in the middle. I've got nice angles. I'm skipping a stitch. So it's pretty regular and I'm trying to keep them the same length and of course the same angle and we should be at the top soon. So this would be, you know, it's not going to quite look the same. It's still going to look cool, but it's probably not the shading that you want for this leaf. However, it is shading and it will have kind of a groovy effect. But again, I want to show you the different ones so you can pick the one that you want to do and do it and try or try all of them, all the different ways and come up with your own. Of course, that's that's always a thing and see what amazing effects. Well, that one was way too tall, wasn't it? That's not the look we're going for for this one and back. And I'm almost done. And because we're zoomed in, it seems to take forever, but that's OK. Boom, boom, sound effects mix makes everything better. So this one, I'm keeping it kind of regular and standard, right? Yep, auto scroll doing its thing, still getting used to it. Almost there. Keep with it. Oh, my hand's getting tired. I can do this. I could do it. Click happy. I must be almost at the top now. My goodness. But you're going to see this. And I'm doing this. I'm really literally doing this for a reason. Uh, I am at the top. So let's just hit enter. Now, see how nice regulated that I made? Now let's zoom out. Yeah, that's not quite the same, is it? When you zoom out to let's do 100%, which we almost are. When you're zooming out, that's not 100%. That's 100%. Now, do you see how that looks? I spent a lot of time making it regular and clicking, but when you zoom out to how you're going to look at it, it wasn't enough. And the reason why it's not enough, you zoom in and look, is because look, there's only two stitches. So it needs to be more. And that is again when your grid comes in handy because now you know two stitches is not enough for it to show up. It's not enough. We need more like this. This one is really good, but more like this. This will blend right in. This will kind of, you'll just see yellow. So you kind of, you know, kind of wasted a lot of time on it because it doesn't quite work out. So we need more like how many? One, two, three, four, five. More like five, more like four, five, maybe even six looks even better when you go back to 100%. Yes, so a little bit more plus a little bit less. So that one didn't really work out, not liking it. Sure looks good like this. It's absolutely perfect. So let's try it again. Let's look at our, um, let's go back to our select. Let's look at our leaf here and we'll look at this one. Um, another way you can do it that might help now it might help for you to get the hang of it. Let's go to open shape. Let's follow along the picture, which if you didn't have, if you didn't have um, true view on, you could see underneath it. But again, just for the class, let's try different ways and you guys can figure out which ones you like better. So I'm just going through here and I'm just kind of copying the natural things. And remember, if you want to know how many stitches, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's long enough. As long as it goes past two, that's what we've learned, right? As long as it goes past two and you can go here and let's go here because this is kind of yellowy in here and go back and let's do here. 
and we may want to do because uh, it's getting let's zoom in a little bit here so we can actually see what we're doing don't like that one this one kind of goes like this and yes you can vary everything go back on itself and maybe we want a few shorter ones because we know what they look like they just kind of make it blurry this one goes out like this this is how to do it let's go back up this side and we're, remember we're only talking about this little part we can go up here not too far though we don't want to get into our enter entry enter into our other part and we may have there I'm not really sure remember you're working with a running stitch and you see how different this is going to look the only thing that I'm not doing is making sure I have the right angle on it however we can go back and correct that now let's look here this seems a lot more yellow doesn't it it does so let's do a series of just even like this you don't have to go have it go back on itself and these are going to be the small stitches that we were talking about let's see even just go to the yellow let's keep it realistically go to the yellow and go back here you see what I'm looking at and you don't have to worry about them see how I didn't go back on itself because that's really only half a millimeter how big is that that's not very big that's not very big so we do want to keep the right angles though don't we now let's take this part here and let's go right out because I think that's going to look cool we're venturing into the brown a little bit more on this one and we are going to add some green so let's go look if you look at it that looks like to me it looks like the yellow goes to about there so you can do one side up one side down you can go back up you don't want to go over the middle line you know 50 times or anything but a few it's okay it's just gonna make it brighter it's gonna make it brighter so this is a completely other way of doing it now remember with your grid you know you kind of have an idea now how big it's gonna be and this is just gonna highlight the yellow let's call that one enter that doesn't look like a whole lot it's kind of cool looking though nice absolutely nice and just you know showing you let's put it right where we want and let's look at that yeah cool cool almost a bit too much in there the only thing have I kept to the angles I did pretty well on that one that might be a bit much that's going to show up but let's let's zoom out let's step back I always say step back and see how that looks now now that's a little more interesting you can see that is not interesting that I did freehand not bad not bad not bad at all maybe a little too much in there I don't know I think it would look cool when it's stitched out well, let's look here these stitches were probably too much and if you wanted to go in and edit them you can certainly do that that if I was doing this to stitch it out I would go back and take these down by half um, these ones are probably okay it is going to have an absolutely gorgeous effect when we're done so let's do another one that way just because that one worked out really well so there's lots of ways of doing it let's do this part and uh, I think we're zoomed in enough let's grab our digitize open shape let's start from the bottom because that's what we've been doing start from the bottom and we want the yellow to show because it's quite distinct in here and let's do it this way and follow these guys I know these aren't all that bright yellow but I think it's cool I'm actually going to do one up there too and there we go we don't want too many stitched points so careful how you're doing it and let's go here yes I like that so far and maybe a few little ones in here just random keep it random keep it looking good I might want to zoom in a little bit more don't forget about your angles they're quite steep on this leaf so don't forget about them go this side that side and it's kind of yellowy here kind of I like that let's do this vein because it goes right out and I think the longer ones really add to the effect really add so we've learned the size of your stitches and how to tell them when you're making them we've learned that one stitch 
really isn't going to provide you with a lot of shading. It really isn't. And you have to, if you're putting it this close, it's only, you know, a millimeter apart. And how much is a millimeter? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot indeed. So placement is all important in this, what we're doing. So let's see, we're doing this part. So here, so it's all about, it's all about, you know, you're doing it yourself and figuring it out yourself and trying different things. You have the basics here and we're just doing it a few different ways. So you get the hang of it. I'm going to take this one all the way out here and I'm going to double up the line and I'm going to pause right here. Remember your angles, remember your angles. There we go, because I want that little splotch to be yellow. What do you think? We're going to have a nice kind of glow effect going on on this one. And it is, again, I keep saying it is just so gorgeous when you stitch it out. Remember your angles here. We want this a little bit thicker. How about we run this one too? Because I think that's going to look cool. And we'll go back to working it on the true view in just a minute. But this way might work. You can always set it up like this. Whoops, I really don't like that one. You can always set it up like this and then go back and uh, adjust your angles if you need to. Let's do it a bit further because we want it. Now the other side isn't particularly glowy. And we're going to stop right there, close enough. Let's move this guy over. I much prefer, I much prefer, see we managed that one in one piece. Let's see how it looks when we put it on our leaf. It's so exciting. It's, oh, let's move it down because he went way off there. How cool is that? Doesn't that look pretty? See, I don't like that quite as much, the glowy, but the, the you know, random effect of it is looking fantastic. So let's do this last one on the stitches. So we make sure that we get our angles properly. The better, the closer you are on the angles, the better. So because it's thick, I wanna go all the way up and back because, and I'm gonna offset it just a tiny bit. And then here, and I'm gonna go back on itself and we're gonna do a regular one for this one. We're going to stick to our angles. You can see the angles, but I'm going to do them longer and you can see the effect. And then for the last side, we're going to mix all of what we've learned and do it really cool. So let's, I'm doing it again, regular and coming back on itself, regular. There we go. And I'm skipping enough. I'm skipping one, two, three, four stitches on this one, just to show you the difference between the regular one that are really close together and really small to a regular one um, that's further apart. Now, I do, you don't have to be all that precise. I'm just kind of guessing, but I'm making sure that I'm following the lines. We'll take it up here and we're gonna end it right here. Let's hit enter. Now, pretty cool looking. Pretty cool, let's step back. It does have a nice effect. We're about at 100%. It does have a nice effect. However, I think these ones look much better. Um, I think this one or this one, with a little bit of tweaking on this one, I think those two are my favorite. So now let's go in. Um, now we can put our leaf behind and see, but again, it's too hard to see for you guys to see. So I'm gonna look at it and I've kind of got the idea of what I wanna do. So we've discovered we need to be random. So randomness is also a key. Let's, uh, we ended up here, so let's start there. And I'm gonna go down and we're gonna make it random with enough space in between. We're gonna skip every four or so stick to your angles and we're going to do one short and we're going to do one longer not quite yet i need to zoom in a bit i'm probably not at the right number i'm still not but that's okay for this one that is just fine we want to hit that run right there and make sure you're doing your angles that one looks pretty good for that and we're going to skip a couple and we're going to do it short and we're gonna do a little bit off angle, just a tiny bit. 
I do like them to go back on themselves. And if you can't get the right angle, put it down a little bit more. That's a little closer. And a couple of maybe one or two in between. This is kind of a small part. And there, and maybe some small ones. Put it down and angle it more because we want to keep the angles very important. And we are almost done our beautiful leaf. Almost done indeed. I think I want that one short. So remember, random, sticking with the angles and making your stitches big enough. Those are the keys to doing it. Enter, and how does that look? Doesn't that look awesome? So a few ways there. I actually really like that one. So random, you might want to put them a little further apart, but it sure gives the glow that we see here, doesn't it? Sure gives the glow on the bigger ones. And that, when you stitch that out, oh my goodness, it's going to be so beautiful. So it is a bit of experimentation. The regular ones just don't work. Small, tiny stitches is not the effect that you want. Longer mixed with shorter, further enough apart. I think this one is just about perfect. It's absolutely just about perfect. The last thing I want to do here on the leaf, if we noticed in the picture that this part was quite yellow indeed. So let's make it quite yellow indeed by just adding a few extra yellow pieces and again keeping it random and it's going to kind of give it a glow. You don't want too many stitch penetrations there in the same spot because that's going to make a mess. Let's try that. So stagger everything and just by adding a few things, doesn't that change it? Doesn't that change it indeed? So this one's kind of random looking, but it looks like more yellow here. And remember, when you're stitching, it's going to blend it in even better. So those are the things we've learned about shading and angles. Making your stitches big enough and making them random are the keys to doing it. So let's add one more layer to our leaf because I absolutely love it. I decided last minute that I love the fact that this leaf found outside my house yesterday morning has a bit of green left in it because we're still trying to hold on to summer. So why don't we add a little bit of green? Now I'm going to do this one standing back, I call it a little bit. Oh, let's make you green. Just a single stitch. You don't have to change anything. You can if you want to mess around with the stitches settings. That is fine. Um, it'll make a difference. I did on mine some, but it's not huge. So what I'm going to do here, and this is what I did on mine, is I just added some veins here and there and just kind of maybe a few here of green. And I think, see, because the green is centered right around here, it doesn't you know, really go up to the top. So I just thought it would be really cool. Keep keep your same angles. I thought it would be really cool to add another green layer. And I think it would be good if we stitched the green layer out before. But let's see. So I'm just kind of, you know, we want to go along with it. We kind of want to go along with it. And then I just kind of want a... Oh, I don't like that one. Let's zoom in a little bit. I don't like that one. And it's just kind of, I want to add a little glow to everything. So let's let's just see what this is going to look like. Maybe a little bit more on the edges here. Maybe. I don't think I did this side. So zoom back and do that side. Don't have too many stitches. Make sure you stagger them. And look at that. And I think I'm going to leave it exactly like that. I don't think I'm going to stitch that out underneath. And look at that. Let's go back to our it's pretty close to 100%. That is going to blend in so beautifully. And just kind of, you know, add a little bit. You don't want, you know, 40 colors or anything like that, but just a little highlight. And just now these are going against the angle. They're going at a completely different angle. Um, so they're going to stand out more. I think they stand out enough. If you wanted to say, let's focus here on this one, 
This is yellow along here, so you do the yellow the way we did. If you wanted more green to show up, because of course it's up to you how you want to do it, you could basically do the same thing but with green. So do green stitches here, make sure you spread them out a lot so they're not, you know, maybe three, maybe two, maybe three. And on this side, they're a bit shorter, so spread them out a bit more. And you'll get even more of the green glow when you stitch it out. Personally, I think this is wonderful. Um, a little bit of practice, a little bit of playing around. Let's go over what we learned. Let's zoom in. This is not going to be shading, although it looks like you're mixing the stitches when you're close up, you're, I'm really close up, you're supposed to be at 600%. It looks like you're missing, mixing the stitches. You are in fact not because it, when you zoom out the way you're going to look at it, it doesn't look like the stitches are going to blend. And stitch it out if you do one like that, stitch it out and then you can really see this one looks good. The blended in green looks a little uh, fantastic. Oh, we forgot to do the stem. We could do the stem. Um, make sure you make all your connections. I kind of did it piece by piece. I kind of showed you random things. You can play around with your stitch length if you want. I wouldn't go past, say, 5 or 550. Um, let's look at that just super quickly. Let's take one of these guys. And I just want to show you this, and we're in millimeters here, so I want to show you the difference between it. Now that looks good. I like it. I like it a little bit smaller, but you see the difference in the stitch length? The stitch length, the numbers, see how small that one is? That's two millimeters. One, two. And I took it from one, two to five. So you see the difference? And that will actually help you blend stuff. Now you have to stitch these guys out a little bit so you can see the difference. You may want to do maybe 2.5. Um, standard setting is 2. So 2.5, a little bit bigger. Um, you can play around with that a little bit to see. It's not going to make any difference on this one. Let's try it anyways. Let's bring it up to 5 just to see. Now it would blend in a little bit better, but it really doesn't look any better to me. So that one's, no, I don't like that one. So that is how you start working with blending here inside Hatch Embroidery Software. Thanks everyone for watching. I can't wait to see your homework on this. Play around with it, get the hang of it, Remember the three rules and happy digitizing everyone. I'll see you guys in the next class. Thanks.